Okay, you can see on this simple graphic that a shaft is rotating. And if you pick one point on that shaft and watch it from the side as it rotates around, it looks like it's moving up and down. So if you track how that point moves over time and draw it out like it's shown on to the right of, of the rotating shaft, it looks like a sine wave. This is the most basic signal. What this illustrates is that as a shaft moves, it produces a vibration in one direction, which when plotted over time, looks like this sine wave. So now I want to talk about what that might look like if there were different shafts rotating at different speeds. So how does that sine wave look different? And here are a couple of examples of different shafts rotating at different speeds. The top shaft is rotating the slowest. It has the widest time between the peaks in the sine wave. So it's a very wide sine wave between the peaks. The bottom shaft is rotating quickly and it has much narrower peaks, shorter peaks between the sine wave. These are all examples of different sine wave frequencies. However, this is three different shafts all rotating at different speeds. But when we analyze real world, world vibration from a single point on a machine, there's only one shaft rotating at one speed. So where do we get all of those different frequencies? In reality, as a shaft rotates, it produces that one frequency based on that one shaft speed. But a machine can have many different frequencies coming from many different components in the machine. In this example, you can visualize the shaft speed by watching one single blade on a fan as it rotates around on that shaft. And this is the same sine wave that we observed in the last example. But there's a second frequency produced from this one machine. And that is that every time one blade passes by one point on that machine, you have another frequency. So if you were to put your hands next to that fan and felt the air being pushed by each blade as it passes by your hand, then you would feel five pulses of air in a single shaft rotation from each of the five blades on the fan. So there is a second sine wave being produced, which is five times faster than the shaft speed based on the five blades on the, fit, on the fan. So to put it in a different way, the sine wave is five times more narrow on the time plot than the one produced from the shaft. But when vibration is measured, we are only measuring one single time waveform. So if we just built an analogy uh, by thinking about sound from a guitar, if you plucked one string on a guitar, you're hearing one sound, and it's coming from one single frequency. But if you plucked two strings, you're still only hearing one sound. Your ears are only picking up vibrations, air vibrations, from one sound. But it's coming from two different frequencies. So the way your ears hear this is as one single time waveform. And that time waveform looks like a superimposed image of a slow sine wave with a faster sine wave. So this is what we call a complex signal, complex time waveform. And that fan was a great example of that. But what the FFT actually does, uh, the fast Fourier transform takes that complex signal and breaks it down into its individual sine waves. So it's reverse engineering a complex sine waveform, complex time waveform, and it's building it as individual sine waves. And the way that the spectrum displays this is as individual frequencies. So on a spectrum, it has a horizontal axis indicating the frequency and a vertical axis indicating the amplitude of vibration. Just going back to our analogy of, of a guitar, you can think of amplitude as like how, how hard somebody is plucking a string and how loud it is. So that's the amplitude. So the FFT reverse engineers that complex time waveform, breaks it down into individual sine waves. And it's in this way that we can take a complex time waveform, a measurement on a machine, and break it down into its simpler frequencies.